It's a nighttime episode. It's a nighttime. This episode. This is the Pepsi is Pepsi Ice version of the fucking regular podcast because we're sleepy boys. It's late. What does that mean? It means Pepsi. that it's Crystal Pepsi. Like this is you're gonna get the normal podcast, but it's like the alternative version because you know we're oh. sleepy. We it's get like sleepy late. Pepsi you know? Light. It's the Pepsi Light version. Isn't that? It's gonna get discontinued. We're gonna. <laughs> Pepsi Light? Was that a real Pepsi thing? Pepsi Ice. No. no, there was Pepsi oh, Fire, Pepsi, Pepsi oh, Ice. No. I, I, Pepsi, there's a clear Pepsi. Yeah, um, that's Crystal Pepsi. Crystal Pepsi. Blue Pepsi. Was blue? there a blue one? Yeah, there was. There was a blue one, yeah. I remember. There was a, oh, and then uh, today I saw a Pepsi with a splash of pineapple. What? Like appealing to like, kind of like the alcoholics. So like, you could also put a splash. I was on. never a fan of like the fruity I just, sodas. I don't Other drink soda. Other cherry Pepsi, I mean, that's pretty good, but like... Yeah. Lime and stuff, like that's eh, kind of weird. Yeah, I can't drink any dark sodas anymore, even except for Doctor Pepper. It. I think it's really I the think DP we, flavor yeah. party. That's it. Flavor yeah, party. Twenty three flavors, party. dog. It's what the can Baskin you name Robbins any of them of though? Like, what is it? Isn't vanilla, like, vanilla, vanilla, and prunes. Prunes. Isn't it like prunes? I don't know. I thought it was prune it's soda. Dates? dates? No, I don't know. I'm just making it up. Isn't it? It's made out of prune soda. Children underneath the stairs. Prune soda. That's prune juice. That's carbonated. Yeah, I think it's carbonated. Is... Like amaretto, almond, blackberry, black licorice, caramel, carrot, clove, amaretto. cherry, I can cola, ginger, juniper, that. lemon, molasses, nutmeg, orange, prune, plum, pepper, root, beer, rum, raspberry, tomato, and vanilla. Tomato. So basically the guy that came up with it was drunk as fuck, drunk as fuck. And then apparently had an entire farm. Yeah. He was just like, I was going to throw all this shit out, but instead I fed it to the kids. <laughs> it's like a food distributor. Like, oh, I wonder if you mix all these up. Yeah. So it is, you know, prune, prune and plum. It and drink it. Amaretto. Yeah. I don't know. That's some fucking weird shit. I don't know why people like soda so much. I think that shit's kind of, I used to drink a lot of soda. I used to love Pepsi. Pepsi was like my favorite growing up. I stopped drinking soda a few years. Yeah, ago. Yeah, we were a Pepsi family. Did your Pepsi. family have Pepsi. have like a, a soda alliance? Like, it, we don't drink Coke in this house. It was Pepsi. Ain't no Coke. My grandpa worked for Pepsi for a long time. If you brought home a six pack of Coke, was it like? Yeah, you got beat with a switch. Damn. I'm just kidding. That didn't happen. Yeah, my grandpa's that way. Like when he comes to visit, we go like stock up on Pepsi, and it can't. There's no like you can't get him Diet Pepsi. You can't get him Coca Cola. It's got to be. That's Fucking good. Pepsi. See, I like Pepsi. I feel like everyone's the opposite. I feel like everyone really likes Coca Cola, and I'm like, dude, it tastes. It's, it's got like that sweet. battery acid. Yeah. Feel once you you're done drinking it. I don't know. I mean, all soda kind of seems that way to me now because I never really drink soda. But yeah, I remember when I was, I was like, dude, Coke is not as good. Well, what pisses I mean, I'll me? I drink it, but Pepsi is definitely better. Well, and then people get off and they're like, oh, we're, I've been I'm drinking like carbonated water. It's like apple citrus fucking. Yeah. That shit, I fucking have tried. My girlfriend's always like, oh, this one's good. Try this one. It just always tastes like sucking a robot's cock yeah. just with bubbles. Yeah, there was like, like, there's like a, a little stint there where I was getting carbonated water. like, And I was just drinking them because I was like on this health kick where I'm like, all right, I'm not going to do soda, so I got to do something else. And so I was getting those, and it was working pretty good. But then after a while, I was like, you know what? Fuck it. I'm just going to drink water. Yeah. It <laughs> just, like, it's just, all your, that. Yeah. That's all your body wants. It doesn't need like Pepsi to... No. Speaking of water, there's half frozen of it everywhere around us because we live in North Idaho. Yeah, we yeah, skipped fall. Dumped a shitload of snow on us today. Eight inches, and they're like, it's a like winter storm warning. 10 a.m. or something like that. Yeah, it's fucking yeah. not even Halloween. Yeah. Yeah. What's the day of the 23rd? Trump's going to come out and be like, the snow will kill COVID now. Yeah, right. Yeah, no shit. <laughs> it's going to freeze COVID. it off. I'm Dude. less racist than I... the snow is. Yeah. <laughs> God. I don't already want to talk about politics, yeah, but right. there was a second debate yesterday. Yeah, last I night. I didn't watch it. Apparently, it was slightly less embarrassing as a country to watch. Um, maybe slightly, slightly more I don't substantive. Know. <laughs> yeah. I don't know. I heard I it on the back. Both are terrible. It, was, it was on in the background today, and I was just like, uh, I want to. Yeah, I, just... I ended up watching it last night because I was like, I got to know how this goes because I got to see the continuation, the sequel to the first one because the first one was just like, Garbage. Bro, did this guy really just say for these racist people to stand down or stand back? And then he just totally would not denounce like his like affiliation with these like racist movements. I was like, dude, we just saw that. Like he just did that in front of the world. And I'm like, something's got to happen this time around. And then here he is like 
comparing himself to <laughs> Abraham Lincoln. And then he gets kind of called out on it. He's like, I never said that. And it's like, we, yeah, we just watched you say that. We just watched you say it. But whatever. that was debate Trump. That was a different yeah, guy. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> No, I don't think so, Joe. That wasn't me. I never said that. I'm a big fan of role playing. (laughs) Billions and billions. (laughs) Trump role playing. Yeah. Uh, They're both terrible, though. He would be a killer D&D partner, though, I will say. (laughs) Yeah. Like Trump on my team, <laughs> we're going into the mine. You know, like he's always pushing the fucking. He's like, no, we're gonna push. You know, <laughs> everything is like we're gonna rob the bitch and we're gonna like, everything. Just taking everything and unlocking, just super like, leveling. Don, you know, we have like five HP left. Yeah, like, he's like, it's fine. No, we're, no, gonna it's gonna gonna we're gonna double down. We're gonna double down. We're gonna reinvest. Have like, you seen our attack? It's millions and yeah. millions. He's negotiating with fucking <laughs> dudes like. You know, getting killer prices on a sword and then using the sword to stab them. Yeah. And then we're like, oh, we're off. <laughs> Dude, dog eat dog world out there. Especially yeah, it's in pretty D&D. nuts. I, it's so, like, I think, I don't know, we can cover this stuff later on if we need to, but I just feel like the whole world is just on the brink of just, like, civil war almost. Like, more yeah. so than I've seen it before, you know? And I think that tensions this year are so high from all the shit that's been it hasn't been on. a fun year no not at all I yeah this, I, it's funny because like my job like my regular job to make money like i talk to people all day long from around the entire country because i sell insurance you know right and then i talk to people at like every fucking state pretty much and everyone like collectively agrees everyone from like really really old people have been around for a long time to like you know 20 year olds that I talked to this is the worst fucking year <laughs> like ever like in our lives like I just talked to this this lady earlier this week and she was even saying that too she's like you know I was I am 80 something years old and still I have never experienced anything like we're going through this year this is just terrible and I'm like yeah and that, if you're saying that then that says something you know yeah so. she's seen a lot of terrible shit yeah, she's like, like she I, was... I sucked a dick in the thirties. This <laughs> this is worse. Like the dicks were before not before they were shaved. Yeah, <laughs> there was pubic hair in my ear. Yeah, before these just... manscapes and whatnot. Yeah, what no you. one was trimmers with electric yeah. batteries. People on them. were just <laughs> haphazardly shoving Back shit in, my day, in there faces. Cigarette butts in my cereal. Yeah. Yeah. His dick tasted like a horse. Like... You know how small dicks were in the thirties? Oh, <laughs> my, they probably didn't do that back then. They didn't do. Freaking! <laughs> there was no ratio. size queens. It was just like, <laughs> just get it done. Well, no, we <laughs> drink out five kids. And there was no size queens. Got to help out the farm. They didn't have a choice. It was they get punched in the mouth, yeah. and it's you're going home with me. So dick is dick. That's <laughs> yeah. Most women only so, saw one penis their entire life, yeah, so it was okay. never like the size thing. You know, you could rock a fucking one and a half inch rock hard, and she'd never seen anything else. She just assumes all all penises are, you know, yeah. one inch long with a cowboy hat on them. You know, and that's yeah. it. And that's just the long and the short of it. You know. <laughs> <laughs> Just a little wiener with an actual cowboy yeah. hat on. That's hilarious. Giddy up. Oh man. Yeah, but Times it's, it's been. Changing. I mean, speaking of, it's been fucking rough this year. You're not really doing your other venture right now. No. Like you're there can't be any concerts. You run all, monumental, yeah. Yeah. and you're just completely paused. Yep. One hundred percent. Especially being centrally located in Washington, where it's very. Sparse as it is. I mean, here, yeah. yesterday, they lifted the mask mandate. Yeah, I know. I saw that. It's pretty wild. Like, so, like, uh, I can just go to the grocery store, and they're like, yeah, mm-hmm. we fuck. People still do. So, Walmart as a company is still being like, please wear masks. But I was in there today wearing a mask. Half the people didn't have them. Oh, yeah. No, yeah. So, they're not enforcing anything yeah, anymore. Yeah, unless the law tells them to, they're not going to fucking do it. But, um, as private businesses, they do, in my opinion, have the right to be like, yo, we feel like... You know, Costco, for example. Yeah. yeah, of course. If they want to be like, yo, don't come in here without a mask, then that's their right. And that's I, I probably how they're going to – they're probably yeah. going to proceed that way. But all I'm saying is if I can smell your fart through your jeans, this fucking mask is not going to save me. Uh, I know. I did some research, it's, and fart particles are smaller than COVID. It's just so weird to me because, like, I just drove here in, like, the terrible-ass snow, and I got here in, what, less than an hour? Yeah. And, like, that's all it takes to get from one area where or, yeah, you have totally to wear a different. mask everywhere you go yeah. to another area where they just don't give a shit. Right. You know, so it's like, and tons then of how, how good is this going to work for everyone? Not at if, all. You know, one area nearby isn't going to cooperate with the same effort that this other area is going to. Yeah, but to. then do you want the feds telling every state that this is how everyone, I know, you know exactly. what I mean? That gets it's a, scary. It's a real give or take kind yeah. of thing. And, like, it's... 
I don't know. I mean, I get how people would think that the whole mask thing is is stupid in some ways, but I mean, for the most part, I mean, like, really, obviously, the main intention for the masks is to keep right. the virus from spreading because that's really what we need to do because we need it to fucking go away. So, I mean, if if there are states that are just gonna abolish that idea, <coughs> then I mean, I guess we'll just see if there's repercussions. I think everyone's from that, gonna get it, man. Yeah, Everyone, I mean, you're it's gonna, less, you're gonna get it. There's a there's a Eventually, pretty decent chance of you're that. You're gonna happening. get it. Yeah, there's almost because... a good argument for it, like to let it run its course, like wear masks. I mean, like, I'm like, I'm sitting here it, talking but... shit about masks, but I absolutely wear a mask when I go outside. Oh, yeah, I but too. I'm doing yeah. it because I'm just I'm not trying to rustle any feathers. You guys all want me to wear a mask? I'm gonna fucking wear a mask. I'm yeah, not, I'm not sick. I mean, it's fucking whatever. Yeah. But who knows? I could be asymptomatic. Blah blah blah. So exactly. Regardless, I'm going to wear a mask, but at the same time, I'm sitting there going, eh, I'm not really saving any lives here because I could cough in this mask and it's going to shoot out the fucking sides. Well, not only you know that, if I mean? you're not sick, you're not sick. But then, I mean, how do you know if you're sick? How do you know? Like, yeah, the day you know. get sick, you're not going to be like, oh? There's so you much know? shit going on with that, but I don't know. I just really hope that whatever it is that we decide to do, I hope that it doesn't spring back on us horribly. I, yeah. And, like, a lot of people have been talking for months now like oh there's gonna be a second wave there's gonna be a second you saw wave the ICU this winter here full. and it's just like fuck i don't want that to happen i'm worshiping you know? people to fucking seattle right now because the icu's in Coeur d'Alene well full. there you go i mean we'll see how this ends up like in a month or two when everyone isn't wearing their mask because no one wants to right and then perhaps maybe then we'll see the maybe holiday. not i think I yeah know. i think the holiday i'm not a health be... expert but i mean to me the mask seems like a good idea i mean if you're gonna bitch and moan about having to wear a mask that to me seems stupid. If you're going to complain about businesses being closed, okay, you know, because it's like that's people's livelihoods. Right. And shit. Some people are. But for a fucking mask, like, come on, man. Yeah. Like, just put on the fucking mask. Yeah. Could yeah. Be that's what I'm saying. Open up all the shit. I have an underlying health condition. Mm, probably not. Probably not. You, Pro- you probably uh, don't. Yeah. So, I mean, let's well, let's be honest here. Let's be honest. You're pretty good at breathing. I can hear Joe Biden in the back. Come on. Come, come on. on. Come on, come on. You're overweight. Come on. You have a Coke in come your on. hand. That's yeah. your problem. You don't have an underlying health issue. Yeah. It's a very outward <coughs> lying. Yeah. Everyone yeah. can see it. Yeah. That's why. I mean, if, if someone underlying. actually does, then I don't know. Then grow up. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. Dude, grow up. Obesity, grow up, obesity dude. is not an underlying. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I have underlying health conditions. Yeah. You're like, you're 5'6 and 425. So. Today I saw <laughs> someone shared, like, a, a GIF or whatever of this guy. <laughs> he was wearing a mask on one upper lip and a mask on the bottom lip. And then he had a hot dog, and he just opens his mouth. <laughs> and like, puts the, the hot dog in his mouth. Dude. It looked like a dinosaur yeah. or something like that. I was like, dude, this is hilarious. It's like a beak. Yeah. Oh, that's that was a, pretty great. I like that. Just chomping on a hot dog. <laughs> I want to go to a store. I really need to go to a store like that now and like talk like wow, like just look like the big bird. They're like, sir. You look like you look. Dude, like you should a... go in the weed store and do that. Oh, I, what I want to do because you know is, they're all is... stoned and they're just like, whoa. <laughs> yeah, they're well, like, oh, dude, whoa, twenty percent off for birds. It's Sunday. Like, God, no, I want to be driving down the freeway with that, smoking a cigarette with two masks on. <laughs> Passing someone who's driving with a fucking mask on alone oh, and God, just be like, kind of give them the what the up. Funniest Dude, thing ever. Oh my God. I hate yeah. that. Like, so the whole mask thing, I mean, like, you go in public, wear a mask, but, right. dude. The I see driving, people, like, the walking. swimming with the mask yeah, on. I, I see people, the, like, the walking their dog, and there's no one near them, and they're wearing a mask. And I'm, like, Put a mask on the dog. Bro, like, you, yeah. you don't have to wear a mask when you're by yourself. Or, when you're in the car, like, are you going to get yourself sick? Like, who are you protecting yourself right. from? Who are you protecting with you in the car, there's no one with you, yeah. dude. Like you're not gonna give yourself. It's so my car know. has it. Cars so, come on, can man. Get it. Let's use some common sense. Car, she's like, my one. car was made in China. It could have coronavirus. Those, <laughs> those are the same God. people. Those are the same people that won't start the car until everyone else in the vehicle has put on their seatbelt. Oh yeah. Oh, you ever yeah. been that with grandma? Like, yeah. we're not going anywhere. Tell you strap or on. Or when they make yeah. a turn <laughs> and they like almost come to a complete stop before they turn. Yeah. So like, oh, you dude, just oh, sit in there. The, yeah, the seat's already preheated. You're like, yep, they're going to put on easy listening. And mm-hmm. I have to, yeah. Yeah. Oh, my God. There's some steps on the way to the seventh layer of hell. And that's where people like that need to go. That, people are people dude, that listen to easy listening in a nice vehicle? And no. Are just safe, the, safe driving purposes? Insurance companies love these people. That's a right well, about I think it. that causes more that wrecks. True. That's the bread and butter of insurance agencies is people who pay their premiums every month and never have a claim. Yeah, pretty much. They're like, everyone buckle up and we're going to And then I hear it every day like, I don't know, I have to pay so much for insurance because I'm paying for all the bad drivers out there. Right. Like, it's just like Maybe taxes. you are. 
Maybe yeah. you. Won't. You know what? But we're paying for your social security, so get fucked. Right. <laughs> yeah. Ay. Yeah. I don't know. The snow sucks. That's all I got right now. Yep. <laughs> Winter is here. Yeah. Thank you for making the harrowing drive from the south hill is dude i was like going down the hill down. and i was starting to slide and i was like fuck and i went down it's like October. a side street like to get off of the, the 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 decline there and i was like about ready to text you and be like nope not happening and i was like mm, let me try it one more time wow. <laughs> and then i went down I was like, okay i got this yeah the south hill of spokane turns into some like like i don't know slalom skiers wet oh yeah it's he's like, like i want to live in a town where i can ski everywhere <laughs> and, and it's very terrible for cars and everyone dies pretty much but yeah. i ski off and go oh, 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 oh. you know i'm off to fuck your bitch oh, oh, oh. it's like shoots and ladders oh dude the they are vertical hole. streets there's like yeah. it's terrifying literally saw a guy rock climbing up third street <laughs> <laughs> like, oh, i'm just training for you know of like Thor trying a quad athlon just on all four yeah <laughs> Damn, dude. Crackheads nah, training go, uh, for the Olympics. It's so steep. No shit. I had to go all the way down to Ash and Maple. to get, So I had to go like the opposite direction to get to you guys because it's the least steep hill. Because anything else, I would have just like probably crashed. Do you see people just absolutely throwing their lives away in the winter on the hill? Like forgetting, taking a hard ride and be like, oh yeah, this one's an elevator to so hell. So I haven't seen anything super crazy yet, but that's because normally I'll go up like a safer route. And then once I'm past that, I'm just going home because I live way up on the hill. So like, oh, okay. like way past that, you know, the hill area or whatever the hell. But when I was uh, in my late teens and early 20s, I lived in an apartment in Brown's Edition, and it was on a pretty steep hill right across from the museum. And I would see cars slide down that motherfucker mm -hmm. all the time. And our living room window was right there. Oh, my like, God. Like, perfect view of the bottom of the hill. So we would have, like, parties at our house, and there'd be, like, 15 of us, like, in my apartment with, like, beers and, you know, like, whatever. And, like, we'll have the curtains open. And then we'll just, anytime a car becomes down, be like, oh, there's another one, there's another one. We'll all, like, gather around the window. And then, like, if they made it, we're like, ah! And then they, they'd, like, crash in the other cars. Like, Was it ever one of your buddies? Along. Like, dude, I'm coming! <laughs> like, <laughs> no, but one time, uh, one time the car crashed into a parked car that belonged to our uh, neighbor into the apartment below us. And, okay. like, the car starts driving away, and we knock on the door. And they answer, and they got a like a fifth in their hand, and they're like around our age, and, and we're like, dude, someone just crashed in your fucking car. He's like, he's and like, bring the fifth. He's like, are you fucking kidding me? And he like points to me. He's like, you, you're coming with me. And so him and I get in his car. <laughs> Shit. We go chasing the guy. We go downtown. We're like chasing this guy, going in opposite directions on all the one ways. Oh There's my snow god! Everywhere. It's a ghost town because no one's out driving. It's like midnight on like Saturday Shit, night or you something. You guys are just on a vigilante. And I'm just mission. sitting there, just like, dude, this is wild. And this guy's like pretty drunk that's like driving and stuff. but i didn't know when i got in the car with him you know he's like hey like, i'm drunk you want to go kill a guy in the it, streets dude, of spokane it was, it was straight up grand theft auto yeah it was nuts i've I, like did he bring the alcohol with him crazy no 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 oh that would no. that's cool because his uh sorry so that guy didn't even live there it was like his buddy lived there and his buddy was our neighbor our neighbor Jeez. was the one holding the bottle, and then I didn't see this guy with a drink at all. And so I get in the car with him to go chase this dude that hit him, and then it just turned into this big, crazy adventure. Did you get the guy? So, yeah. So he had his he had his cell phone. like It was a flip phone back then, so it was a while ago. And uh, he's got the cops on the phone while he's like reading off this dude's license plate number the whole time and everything, too. And like the cops are like, all right, so where is he at now? And I'm like, oh, I'm chasing him. We're on. What the fuck is this? Howard in Jesus <laughs> second like well and he was like giving the cops an update as we're like chasing this guy and everything Damn. and then um and then the guy crashed into another car while we we're chasing him too like another parked car it was, it was pretty wild dude. Dude. yeah it was nuts you guys like filmed your own episode of cops in Spokane well there's no like good video on like yeah. cell phones back then it's all flip phone shit so but that would have been cool though dude that's yeah, Spokane that's Spokane's just like GTA think of all the crazy <laughs> shit we did back then that like there's no video of it because our phones didn't have... Some of it's probably best. Yeah, right, exactly. Um, <laughs> some of it's probably best. Every single one of us would probably have our penis on canceled. some sort of video. Just be canceled. Like, right? Just like naked and drunk somewhere. Yeah. <laughs> Passed out. Yeah, dick pics back then were oh, just a lot more pixelated, so it was a little, oh, yeah. left a lot more to the imagination. <laughs> oh, I know, I know. You can have a really ugly dick in the flip phone era, and they're like, oh, okay, yeah, I get it. Could be there. It's got the right <laughs> shape. Yeah. <laughs> Nowadays, it's like, oof. <laughs> High definition dicks don't look good. On this one. 
Thank so you. back to back to the music thing. You're fucking. Are you like riding the wave of like? I agree. There should not be shows. I'm not going to fight it at all. Or are you trying to like? Yeah, yeah. Because like there can't be. I mean, like if I mean, say for instance, there's a show and then there's a coronavirus outbreak at the show. Who you know, like then someone's mom is pissed off or someone is pissed off. Can't everyone like, sign waivers? Well, you. I got sick of your venue and blah blah blah. So I mean, it it's a liability risk probably. But not only that, I think that it's just. I mean, you legally can't have a show. You know, yeah. it's like there's nothing you can really do about it. So I mean, like, because let's be honest, if there's gonna be a show, depending on the type of music. I mean, if you have fucking Mashuga play. There's going to be a mosh pit. It's not going to right. be social distance at no, all. There's no. no fucking way. And if it is, then it is probably the weirdest mosh fucking pit. lame. Yeah. The weirdest so, mosh like, pit How the ever. fuck does that even work? So I don't know. I mean, if like if we can't even at this point have kids in their own fucking classroom, then maybe we shouldn't have concerts. You know, true. I don't know. True, true, true. Yeah, it's me being selfish. I just want to get punched in the face. In the I'll be honest bit. with you. I kind of want to wait till this whole winter is done to see if it gets if shit hits the fan or not, and then kind of take it from there. And then see right. like how everything. Did works you see the there. show they did in? I'm sure some Scandinavian country because they're fucking batshit out to lunch. But everyone had their own bubble air yeah. bubble thing. Yeah, I think it was the Flaming Lips that was it. Oh, of course, it was the Flaming was. Lips. The yeah, guy's yeah. like a weird yeah, gay sure. wizard or something. <laughs> He's like, I'm in control of time and space and the piano, and they're like, okay, buddy. <laughs> Fucking Damn, dressed dude. like he just invented the <laughs> clock and just like, welcome to my band's the live performance. You're like, yeah, we know who you are. Just fucking play your whimsical ass music. I'm already in a bubble, guy. It's pretty amazing. So that I yeah. think is a great idea, but I would not want to fucking be there, especially trunks. What if you have to take a piss? Yeah, first of all, taking a piss, I'd imagine the line to the bathroom is a little complicated. Yeah. Um, so yeah. some like, people are that? taking a piss in a rented bubble and yeah. watching the flaming lips, and those are the type of people that I'm like, <laughs> Not trying to hang out with, so like <laughs> generally not my fan base. Like, yeah, once it gets in the bubble and pay four hundred euros to piss my pants in a fish tank of my own. They like uh, open yeah. the bubble. It's like this wave. Of like, oh, dude, oh, yeah, dude. you're the guy at the end of the night who has to unzip and clean all the Shit. fucking bubbles, and there's just cocaine residue. It would be fun though. Piss. I mean, like, let's say for instance, I mean, that's not an issue or whatever. I mean, that would be pretty fun to just bounce around in a bunch yeah. of like. I just feel like I'm gonna get really up. really hot. Yeah. Um, it will. It would be uncomfortable, but it'd be an experience for about ten minutes. Yeah, and yeah, if you so. yeah. accidentally unzipped your bubble while you're amidst all the other bubbles, you probably get sucked out into the void and like <laughs> suffocated <laughs> by the other bubbles. So your body just starts falling apart. Yeah, scary. you just kind of get torn apart gently Completely. by the other the friction of the other bubbles. Dope mosh pit idea though, but you have to have the ones where your legs are out. I think they were weren't they all the way in the bubbles? Yeah, they're all the way in it. Yeah, see that's Ooh, not my job. That's dangerous. I need to have the legs out. Um, I wonder if there's like a way to do like an astronaut helmet and <laughs> just like do Wait, that. Wait, can't we head. do that though? Bro, can't we know. do? Because I mean, you... if you wash your hands and if you wash like you put your astronaut helmet on or whatever, <laughs> your bowl, you put your fishbowl over your head and then you wash your hand. Everyone washes their hands afterwards or they spray sanitizer. And no, you wash then... your hands at the pit. You put, get one of those mobile hand washing stations. Off to the side of the pit. Yeah. I'm sure someone's going to be like, have it over their head and throw it. Well, that's probably going to be the thing when they open shows back up eventually. They're they're probably going to come in and wash all sorts of. (laughs) There's going to be a door. You get it. I hate, (laughs) as weird as it sounds, I'm, there's some gross. I mean, shout out Michael Scoggin. Like, there's some stinky motherfuckers (laughs) in Spokane. And I wouldn't mind them having to wash parts of their body at the door because I'm about to be very, you know, intimate. There's going to be a sweaty hand washer. At the I would actually love that. every show. Like, put your hands out. de You have to wash your hands you fucking, for you. <laughs> yeah, I'm not cleaning those dirty ass nails. You got to take care of that shit. Yeah, out. right. Damn. Well, do, can you recognize, do you would remember, like, the stinkiest show you've ever been to? ICP. Oh, oh yeah. Oh, yeah. dude. That's a good one. Zero hesitation. Guar was mine. Yeah, the knitting yeah, factory. Was, was, they opened the doors because we got into ICP the bar is early. Stinkier. ICP has the fago they spray out, so it's oh, like oh, everyone's well, sticky and let's, let's be and, honest, and it's crowded, let's, covered in cum. Just let's be candid about their fan base. Well, no, you yeah. know what I mean. You know, trailer fruit, like, like, <laughs> like <laughs> literally look like hairy pears that live inside fucking mobile houses. You kind of so like, another one too, hey, though. Another I know one. I look like an androgynous orangutan, but like here's another one. Soulfly. When I was at Soulfly, <sighs> Ooh. it was brutal. It was rank. I went there for Unearth. Yeah. I'm not a big soul fly. They like fan. don't wear deodorant because it's got like aluminum in it. <laughs> yeah, like, right. It's just like not what they do. Or like any stoner metal show. Yeah. Like yeah. clutch. A bunch of dudes who are really good at pool <laughs> like, and wear plaids. Was, I think it was like, hey buddy. Like fucking paper delivery hats. I think it was like yeah. weed eaters. Like IPAs. Or like that. 
that Fucking I saw, die. and it was them and uh, King Parrot, and yeah, it, it was it was pretty gnarly. Smart. Yeah, hairy dudes. You get used to it after a while. Yeah. Like, I've been going to metal shows for like ever. Yeah. So for me, it's yeah, like, for man. me though, I'm just like, I don't know. I can't get used to that. The stain, the just sharp body odor, <laughs> like the just sharp. <laughs> I can deal with the mild, like, you know, when you go in and it's like a little, it's soft, it's like steamy. Some Someone maybe forgot deodorant. I'm talking about the stuff where you're like, bro, like. Yeah. It's just like. Stoner like, metal shows. Yeah. ICP. ICP is the and worst. And then like the, the like main, like the, the big metal shows. Because when I went to Slayer this last, what was it? November or something that was also pretty nuts too. Yeah, dudes literally but you're like, shitting their you're pants. You're too busy like watching fire blast in your face yeah. to even really notice, I to, guess. You're just so. and there's like literally 5,000 people there or some shit like that too, so. Yeah, true true true. It was pretty wild. Stinky. Yeah. Stinky, stinky, stinky. Ow. Metal music is I still miss not it though. The Oh, yeah, yeah, I do too. I still I, w- I, I would go smell a thousand dudes farts if I could just get punched in the face during a breakdown <laughs> like real quick. Dude, I was looking it up the other day and this time last year i had 30 shows oh my Jeez. god yeah and then this year i've had two <laughs> it's wild wow what was your last show the last one was uh silent planet oh damn okay, did he get into going to that currents. we were supposed to go to that we did something else dude that show was rad i like, bet it was, it was fit really for a cool. king was on that yeah no 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 it no. was uh I thought we were it was go silent planet currents and uh yeah because i love currents oh, fuck it was day seeker on that yeah know, so if, it, right if it was now. day seeker me and janelle were gonna go to that no day seeker got canceled because we had tickets to that hmm. that was after mm, no i'm pretty sure that or did we miss that like, we, we had to miss a show for you had to go to someone's it, birthday dude it was a really good show like i i remember i was like man i hope like I need 150 people to show up to this. And I was like, I'm feeling pretty good about it. Pre-sale, just like it shot up in like the month leading up to the show. And I was like, fuck yeah. I was like, dude, I need this. Hell yeah. And then, especially for like how brutal last year was. And then all of a sudden, like 250 people were there and I was like, or something like that. And I was like, holy shit. Like, this is awesome. Here, I'll find out actually. I think curious now. I think the last show I went to was Kubla Khan. That show was pretty damn Dude, insane. That like, show that's was definitely one of my favorite shows. That show popped off. Yeah, like Kubla Khan went off. Like mm-hmm. you could like see how stoked they were. Like yeah, they were yeah. like legit excited to be playing that Con- show. Coming with they, that they, booga booga. Dude. Just, they really ooh. were too. And like the craziest thing about that is like like when I got to the show, because I showed up a little bit late because I had to work that night and like I had I had someone I had maybe like Chelsea or someone like that, like kind of help out the band load in or whatever and like and then I show up, and then everyone was, like, super nice the whole time. I check with the tour manager, super respectful, nice, easygoing guy, which a lot of times tour managers can be fucking assholes, you know? Super nice guy, really chill. He's, you know, like, no complaints the whole night. And then, like, they're just, like, really – the both uh, Shadow of Intent and Kublai Khan were both, like, super friendly. And then at the end of the show, the vocalist walks up to me, and he's like, are you the promoter? And I was like, yes. And he just – reaches over to me and gives me a big hug and he's like dude tonight was so much fun we love this we need to fucking come back here and he's and i was like dude thank you like i fucking want you to come back like please make that happen yeah, yeah. Khan can come that, that every band, other month yeah that, that band sell out they get a good reception in spokane they're they're one of those bands that's like oh yeah so this is what i think and i mean like if if someone's like you know, listen, listen, was that the show or whatever? So I think that the show we did in Spokane, especially for a one-off, I think that it actually um, exceeded expectations. And I think it was probably one of the better one-off shows that they've had, like, you know, on that tour probably, right. or even maybe even that year. So I think that Spokane just, like, turned out for that. Well, aren't and we I think- just geographically we are a one-off date because you're going to be playing seattle say uh, it depends i mean like we we, we could through. be seen as like a destination but yeah you're right we can be we can be you're either passed. on your way to seattle or you just played seattle yeah, you do like yeah. seattle tacoma so here or here a, to seattle tacoma we're not a c market we're a b market and so a b market is like you know down from an a which is seattle and portland you know okay whatever. so i would have figured we were like c but i mean a no, c would be we're like, like we're like b. think about Coral like Lane. that suicide white chapel show at the pen <laughs> oh yeah dude yeah. that was one of the most insane things yeah, i've was, ever seen it was unreal it, like the amount of people that were there and like the whole like tour buses sitting out front of the pen yeah. like 
Yeah, like, that's definitely stars. one of my favorite shows I've I've ever been a part of for sure. I remember when I got the offer for that, I was like, uh, and he's like, "Yeah, I'm gonna need you to send me an offer," and I send him a sold out offer. I'm like, I, "This is gonna sell the fuck out," and mm-hmm. he's like, he calls me like right after I send it, and he's like, "So are you good on this offer?" And I'm like, "Yeah," and he's like, "So you really think that you can do this?" And I'm like. Yeah, definitely. I fucking know I can. And I was like, I know every single one of these bands. And I have been waiting years to book Suicide Silence and Whitechapel. They've been like the two main bands on my bucket list. Because let's face it, I got into booking shows when I was 19. And Deathcore was like the thing that like was that I was into at the time. You know, of course, I like a bunch of different other stuff, of course, you know, but like, that was like my main shit. You know, like if you saw me, I was probably wearing like a, I declare war shirt or winds of plague or whatever. So like, and I always wanted to book suicide silence and mainly white chapel. And then, so this time it was like, boom, they're both on a platter. Do you want to book this? And I'm like, yes. And so I have to book this. So he calls me and he's like, so he's like, cause I want to tell you, he's like this off. This is a pretty strong offer. And I was like, well, I'm pretty confident in it. And he thinks like, you're giving him too much money? No. So well, this is what he said. And he goes, because I got an, an offer from the knit. And I was like, oh, okay. And he goes, and y- yours is a lot better than what they gave me. And I was like, oh, <laughs> cool. And he's like, yeah. So he goes, if you're good on this, we'll do this, because I would very much like to make this happen for you. And I was like, fuck yeah. And I sold that son of a bitch out. And yeah, it was fucking dude. awesome. And, and they were fucking stoked on it. And it was a great night. And everything about it it was just like win 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 win. yeah like everything about it it was so cool the only downside the only downside was the agent made us have the first band play 30 minutes after doors and there were so many fucking people we couldn't get everyone in time to see oceano so oceano played to like a lower crowd but i mean we're getting everyone in there yeah you were pushing people in it wasn't us though i from what i heard it was like the whole tour had that problem for oceano which that that, sucks that happens yeah i mean you're just the openers they've been around here a lot though i mean oh yeah yeah oceano what and the funny thing about that too is like i waited so long for oceano to be able to come through spokane for the longest time for years i was like a, a pretty big fan of oceano like back in the myspace days and stuff i even made like a hoodie design for them and shit and i was like dude i fucking love this band it literally took years for me to finally be able to book that band for them to get them to come here it was so weird and then once they came here they came like boom 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 boom, boom like yeah. so many times after that to where it was like a yearly thing almost like sometimes even twice a year i was gonna say i, was like, I think at okay, one point it was like a to- like six months or something like that and it was like them right back and back but so it, yeah I they're think tight there was a time where it was like <laughs> where they're really close like that but yeah i mean they're they're fucking rad i love booking oceano they're, they're rad as shit uh adam's nice guy i mean like everyone in that band they're, they're so easy to work with i've seen yeah. God, one of the craziest things that i saw i think it was like the the first time I booked him, or maybe not the first, maybe it was like second. And I booked him here in Spokane, and I booked him another show in Richland, Washington, at Ray's Golden Lion. And uh, they they do the show here, and it it was it was good. It was a great show. They go to Tri Cities, and they're headlining that one instead of whoever the headliner was at that on that tour at the time, because it was a one off thing. So it was Oceano and Within the Ruins. Oceano headlines. Oceano goes on and at and it's like late at night at Ray's Golden Lion and then Adam the vocalist is like fucking kill each other and I'm like no don't fucking do that because this crowd is going <laughs> no, fucking ape shit no. like they're, they're like going medieval on each other like straight up beating the shit out of each other and then he's like and he just goes like this he goes fuck it it's the last night and then he just shrugs and he's like fucking start throwing chairs and all this and that and all this and I'm like don't fucking do that. Like, <laughs> fuck no. Like, and was, but I mean, it went pretty crazy, but luckily no one got like super fucked up or anything like that. So I'm sure there was like probably a, a few bloody noses or whatever. Would that have come back on you if they like threw a chair? Or I don't know. Through someone. <laughs> through someone. <laughs> fucking hope not. But I mean, it's like it, when the vocalist is up there saying this, it's like, well, he fucking told me to, you know? So it's yeah. like, know. he told me to banish everyone to hell. And it's like a really <laughs> yeah. interesting part of the song. That's yeah. why I did it. Yeah. Right. <laughs> I don't know. So it was, yeah, that, but anyway, so uh, moral of the story. Uh, but that night was fucking nuts with him on there, like just saying that shit, and the crowd just going ape shit. But I saw that motherfucker do a cat scream. That was like, what in the fuck did I just watch? I've only seen that twice, like done that well. And it was Adam from Oceano, and then the other guy was uh, Michael, the newest vocalist for the Contortionist. And it was shortly after he had joined the band. It like 
within like, I think just a couple of months or something like that after he joined and he did a cat scream and he, I guess he was frying on acid when he did it too. I and guess I'm not familiar just, with what a cat scream is. I don't know what that is. is. So a cat scream is when you like scream like a girl. Like oh, okay. we, it is, an, we are oh, incapable oh, of doing like, that. Oh, like, like the, like the job for a cowboy. Yes. <laughs> yeah. Type yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah okay. Like, like we are incapable of doing that. It's impossible. So. I need an example. Yeah, see if you could find one. But yeah, I watched the vocalist, Michael Lesser, of The Contortionist. He's still in the band now. I watched him do that, and I was just like, okay, uh, I think I'm dying right now. Like, how the fuck did this guy do that? Like, it is unreal. Oh, yeah, that's an actual cat. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's a cat scream. He just, yeah, cat he just like, fever. starts hissing. <laughs> oh, dude. Yeah, I'm... <laughs> <laughs> oh my god now i can't turn it off i Dude, guess i should stop it it's on the talking TV directly too. into this microphone i'm sorry oh, yeah, if I you're listening to this i'm attempting to turn off the... okay sorry. this is just this pissed sorry. off cat dude i can't find cat screaming vocals i miss cats Everyone i don't has dogs. i'm not i'm not yeah i fucking love Goodbye, them. cats dude can we talk about mma yeah, it could be. We're having a fucking just a, an MMA slumber party. I watched tonight. Uh, some fights last weekend, actually. The Korean Zombie buddies. versus Brian Ortega. Uh, so I didn't get to catch all of that. I got to catch like the highlights from it, though. Okay, yeah, which were kind of cool. Was, they Brian Ortega dominated. He looked good. Yeah, I remember that. I remember camp. seeing that happen. And then we watched the boxing match afterwards too. Yeah, see, I'm not there. I don't know. I mean, I'm not. Boxing. I'll be honest with you. I don't really follow UFC well, and boxing. You know really what's tomorrow, all. right? No, I don't even know what tomorrow is. Khabib is fighting. Oh, oh, I, I didn't know that. Sorry. But it's in the morning because they're doing it in fucking Fight Island or whatever the yeah. fuck it is. Yeah. And Justin Gaethje. Dude, so like, like UFC and like boxing and or it's like it's like hockey to me. When I watch it, I'm like, dude, this is fucking awesome. This is rad. Like, thanks for inviting me to watch this. I'm totally down to watch this. I'm stoked. But then like once I leave that atmosphere, I'm like. You don't, I don't think about it. Like, I, yeah, yeah I, I get that. Yeah. It's, you know, it's we're like, those rare people that like I do. pay attention and watch to uh, watch it. Not every... rare. No, I have a lot of friends that are like stupid. Like, oh man, did you hear about this guy? Like, his name's like Zagaman Zagamanov. Yash Kalangan, and he's from Calcutta, and he's undefeated. And I'm like, I I don't know who that is. Like, oh my gosh, you know who that is, dude? He's been like tearing it up. And like, <laughs> it's like all over Twitter. He and knocked stuff. out a sheep. He just did this fight and like fucking like fought a guy. The Falkland Islands and just like beat the shit. I don't fucking know. Like, like how the fuck am I supposed to know this? Like, oh man, it's on his Twitter. Like, I don't fucking follow his <laughs> Twitter. Like, how the fuck am I supposed to know about this? That's uh, kind of you just like kind of burnt Dylan. Yeah, Dylan's right, right. kind of a well, little bit it's that like, guy. Like it, it's like for, to me, you you really have to put effort to kind of follow what's going on. I guess it's, yeah, it's kind of you, do, you have yeah. to. Yeah, it's not like football. You know, it's like you everyone you, knows who the fuck is playing. Everyone knows when the Seahawks are playing. You know, but I mean, yeah, maybe that's not a good example because that's like are you a football fan? It's like that. Yeah, yeah. I mean, yeah. I'm not. Like I guess you're crazy. more of a, you're no, more he, soccer. Crazy. He's more of a football fan. Uh oh, what is football? I don't call football because I'm. American. What? Oh, are we recording back again? Yes. Okay, so, but tomorrow is Khabib, Khabib Nagam. Is that the, ca- the cowboy? Yeah. No. No, no, is no, that, no. No, what's his what's The his guy nickname? with the poofy hat, the Russian no, guy. He's no, like, no, your no. little boy. Oh, I'm thinking of, uh, <coughs> what's, cowboy? The, what's the cowboy guy? What's his name? Though? Donald Cerrone. Donald Cerrone. Maybe that's not Justin Gaethje? Charles Oliveira. Maybe, I don't know. John, but I know who Khabib John is. Wayne. I know who Khabib is. I watched yeah, that, Khabib that, is fighting that, Justin Gaethje. The fight he had. That was um, Khabib is fighting Justin J- Gaethje over in Terror Town, and it's going to be good, man. See, Those who's, are... who's Justin Gaethje? He's, he's some, animal. like, cleft-lipped miner's son who just beats the fuck out of dudes. Where's he's he like, from? Like, America. He's, like, the oh, most okay. American dude you've ever seen. Gotcha. He's got his last name in Old English tattooed across his back. He's just, like, a t- typical, like, truck guy. Okay. Just like, yeah, grew up working out in a mine and being a wrestler and just knocking dudes out at the bar. And, you know, he's like a kind of a Chuck Liddell, but more well refined, like refined as a fighter. Who do you think he's going to win? I, my, my gut says Khabib. Okay. Because he's obviously uh, superior in just almost every way. Arguably. And he wore a Bane mask to the weigh ins. So Khabib that's a, did? Yeah, it's a flex. Look at, look at the mask. I saw a still like just of it. recently he did that. It's like I mean it's not a Bane mask, but it's Something like, like it. it has like a grill and it's all metallic and covers everything. I'm like okay, yeah, 
Oh, so it's like that's that dope. skeleton. He's stepping like up Megadeth the mask game. Whatever. Yeah. Would they, the, do they have a name for that? For the Megadeth skeleton guy? Um, you know what I'm talking about. There's a name for it. I know. Yeah, it it's like Eddie. The, I'm just yeah, kidding. Eddie. Uh, no, no Eddie's, that's Eddie's Iron, Iron Maiden. Maiden. Yeah, Eddie's Iron Maiden. Um, the Megadeth one, I don't know. Let me look it up. My icy fingers <laughs> claw your back. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, uh, dude. So, how, readers, digest. Oh, how did he get away with that voice for so many years? Like, dude, so fucking annoying. Like, I, I like Megadeth, but dude, some people that. are, like, so into it, and the vocals did kind of, like, ruin some songs for me. Yeah, Not gonna, the riffage is undeniable. Dude, when I first heard Megadeth, I was, like, I want to say, like, 14, 15 or something like that. And my, we're at the pawn shop, my buddy, my buddy and I, and he's, like, Dude, you should get that album. It's like two do- like two or three dollars, and it was Countdown to Extinction. He's like, "That's the guitarist from Metallica's other band." And right. Like, All right, and I like buy it and I take it home. And I listen to him. Like, what the fuck is this? Yeah, dude? that's it's the like, dude that got kicked out of Metallica. Yeah, and I'm like, <laughs> dude, this is weird. And then I listen to it. And I'm like, it's it's all right, I guess. And then I listen to it again, and then again and again. And I'm like, all right, this is fucking dope as shit. And yeah, it's. I mean, right. I get that it's dope. It's just like. The elephant in the room is the. <laughs> yeah. I don't. I don't. I never listened to that. Dude, metal. I love Megadeth now. Or Metallica. I, mean, I, I or... get it. I get the love for them. It, it, they're they're such a good band, but. Um, yeah, I don't know where it's going with that, but it's the awesome. Metal. I don't know, but I can get it. I can get it if someone doesn't like them though. I mean, that's the same as like a, uh, Merciful Fate, King Diamond. I love Merciful. Oh, Fate. Oh yeah, they're fucking rad as shit. But like, dude. I can get why someone's like, dude, what is happening? This guy. Yeah. They're... Like, ah! Christmas. Yeah. <laughs> like, what the fuck is this, dude? dude. Um, God, what's the one Merciful Fate song? Obviously, can't play it, but definitely couldn't tell um, you a single song. I don't even know. I don't even think I could tell you a Megadeth song name. Vic Rattlehead is the name of the mascot skeleton guy. Oh wow, Megadeth. Very obscure. I've never. I don't know if I. I definitely didn't know that. Like, I don't Vic? Think I've even heard that. What's the full name? Vic Rattlehead. Vic, like Vic, short for Victor or something like that. That sounds racist. Vic Rattlehead. Vic Rattlehead. And he's a skeleton. I don't know, dude. It, do yourself a favor someday and watch like an old VH1 behind the music. It's probably on YouTube or something of Dave Mustaine and how much of like a fucking asshole that guy actually. Yeah, is. he seems like he's like, very. He he really is, but like he's just like, I got another band because I wanted more drugs. And I wanted more women. And I got it. Or something like that. I'm like, Jesus. damn, all right. And he's like, and I was good at what I did, and I fucking did it. And I'm like, all right, dude. Okey, dokey, <laughs> Do dude. your thing. You're dude. not wrong. Yeah. <laughs> I've got more women and bitches now than you, Metallica guy. He's like playing in Iceland. Like, he can never, can never outdo Metallica. Like dude, his Meta- life. dude, it's so weird too because Metallica is the biggest band in the world now. Ever. Yep. They're the biggest one. They've, yeah. They're the first band to ever play all every continent. Is that too. your bucket list like to book Metallica? That's like, never going to happen. No you way. You never know, man. No fucking way. Not with that The way that that attitude. works when you get into big bands like that is there's one promoter that books all Everything. the dates in the country. Yeah. So like Live Nation or something like that. So they don't go out to independent guys like us. They're bigger than that. They, they could book them fucking selves if they wanted to. They're going to sell the place out no matter where they go. You know? So right. it's like... The, the ball game works a little bit different as far as that goes. So... But yeah, I mean, like, shit, if I ever got to book Metallica, I'd shit my pants, dude. That'd be fucking amazing. But yeah, that's not even on the bucket list because it's not existent. So, but... My bucket list, I try to keep small. Who's left? Like, who do you who have you left? Like, it's a realistic target that you're like, okay, I need realistic, to. Realistic, uh, Misery Signals. Oh. Misery Signals, oh, okay. Yeah. There's another one, too. Who was it? It was... Um, have you booked Kill Switch? I've always wanted to book Converge, just because, like... That'd be yeah. a sick show. My, I mean, like, are they that active grows right a, now? Like, it grows a few inches down my pants. Uh, what's that? Are they active right now? Or are they, like, well, I mean, yeah. I mean, like, they just did a tour, what, last year or something. So, I mean, no one's active right now. Right. Oh, yeah, yeah. I guess that's on, a but, silly question. But, uh, <laughs> but, yeah. I mean, like, I just saw them, I think, what, two years ago in Seattle, and that was pretty nuts. I don't know. There's just... Uh, I'm trying to think what other bands. I don't know. Yeah, Misery Signals is definitely up there just because I personally really like them a lot. I always wanted to book like I Killed the Prom Queen or Dance Gavin Dance. I really like them a lot. Just You've never them. they've never played smaller venues around here in Who Spokane. Did? Dance, Dance Gavin, Gavin Dance? Dance. No, they did. I just it was I wasn't, before. It wasn't me. Oh, okay. Yeah. 
It's like I don't. I think the only place I've ever seen Dance Gavin dance is. At but it doesn't Warped matter Tour. anyways, though, because if I would have saw them back then with uh, Johnny, Johnny Craig, Craig, it wouldn't have been as good as it is now with um, Tillian. Tillian, yeah, because yeah, I definitely like Tillian a lot better. Dude, they're so or crazy. Or even with live. Kurt Travis too. Kurt Tra- yeah. To me, Kurt Travis is is better than. Uh, Johnny Craig, you know, I think Johnny Craig's really good, but out of the three, he's definitely my least favorite as far as like being with the band. Yeah, so. uh, but you know, it's cool. Good guy though. I've hung out with all three of those vocalists when they're in their other bands. Huh? I figured out, I was like, Oh fuck. Yeah, dude. Like I hung out with the first person I hung out with was Tillian when he was in uh tides of man way back in the day. And they played a show in Spokane to like almost nobody. And it was them in this amazing band from Australia called Carnivool. The oh, name... I've absolutely heard of them. Yeah, that Jesus Christ, mind blowing. Right? Yeah. Oh yeah. Yeah. Check out Carnivool. Um, Seriously incredible. Some weird like avant avant garde alt metal, but it's like art. Yeah, like progressive rock. Kinda. Super progressive. Shit. Yeah, fucking amazing. Bizarre vocals, bizarre drums. Yeah. So I was hanging out with Tillian, and he got a call to join Seosin that day, Uh-oh. and he was like completely transparent with his bandmates about it so we're hanging out with tides of man out at their van and he's like i just got off the phone with them and we're like what is he talking about and then one of the band members of tides of man is like he got an offer to be the vocalist of census fail today and we're like whoa holy shit And, and we're like dude are you gonna do it and he's like i don't know man i don't know if i'm gonna do it or not and stuff and it was it was kind of cool it was a, it was a pretty cool experience to like be there for that and like how nonchalant they were and just like totally transparent like open to tell us whatever was going on about that you know which was pretty rad and we didn't even really know the guys we just met him that night you know so that was pretty (laughs) cool and then uh kurt travis i've hung out with him a a handful of times when he came through here with uh a lot like birds and then i just had him through last year with royal coda and then one time i had him by himself too just doing like a solo thing and he's awesome. I love Kurt. Like he's such a rad guy. It's a great country name, Kurt Travis. Kurt, Kurt Travis. Kurt yeah, Travis. Like, yeah. Always got dip on him. I wrote a song about Kurt a train. Or, I don't yeah. know. I wrote a song about a train. That's what I do in my free time. Oh man, I just want to go to a concert or a comedy show. Yeah, talking with you is almost making me sad because it's like compounding how much I miss that. I've been it's kind of been not thinking me, about dude. it because it's not like I'm not going to shows and they're going on. Like no one's going to shows, no, so no it's one a is, little yeah. bit easier. But it started to really hit me like maybe like a couple months ago where I'm like, all right, like because I mean, let's be honest, dude. Like when there's no shows going on, like it's been a lot less stressful for me. Do you understand like how True. fucking stressful it is going month to month, and I have like so much money on the line that I have to pay these guarantees to these bands. I have no fucking idea how well these shows are going to go or anything like that. Like it's a fucking stressful. Are you, thing to do. are really you kind is. of like low key thinking about not doing it again because you're getting a taste of, yeah, I have. And like, that's one thing that I've been kind of trying to experience during like this pandemic as best as I can. Cause there's really not much you can really do. Right, like here's a taste of what it would be like to quit. Yeah. This. this is, this is what normal life might be like where you right. don't have to worry about shows. You get off work and then you just kind of do whatever. So, right. Like, but like, I guess I've just been kind of trying to find something else to sort of fill that void. So like during the warmer months, I've been, you know, like, Oh, let's go on a hike. Let's go kayaking. Let's go camping. Let's go do whatever. And like, that's been, that's been pretty cool. But now this winter, now that winter's coming, I'm going to try to do like more snowboarding and stuff like that too. But, but the more I, I realize like how fucking boring everything is like, wait a minute, I could do all this shit and still book shows. You know, it's like, I don't know. I guess like, it's it's nice to have a break for a little while, but I'm at the point now where I miss it, and I understand like things that make it such a stressful job, and maybe there are things that I can do to like help prevent that from happening. And it's going to be a weird transition going back to like things are open up again, and you can start doing shows and start allowing bands. It's going to be weird for everybody. Like it's yeah. going to be a really slow process at first. And the biggest thing that I'm curious about is if it's going to be a situation where shows are back and then everyone's coming out of the woodwork and the crowd is just bursting at the seams to like go to a show and like, you know, the shows are going to do turn out to be great. Everyone's going to have a great time. Or if that happens and then people start getting sick and then there's some backlash for it. Or if it's the opposite, if everyone's like, I'm not going to any concerts, fuck that. Like it is too 
like dangerous to go to a show. So it's like, no one really knows what to expect as far as that goes. And so that's like really the big question as to, I think the bigger shows still sell out and the smaller shows die off. I'm kind of starting to think that everyone's on the same page with us where they're just like, dude, I need to go to a fucking concert. I need to see something. I need to get out of my house. I need to go do something fun. And I'll sign a waiver, put on a mask and roll the fucking dice. to see. Exactly. I might not, I mean, I would too personally, but like, I might not get in a pit. Yeah. But, yeah, I think people it's, are just like, fuck it. If it's he, a pretty tough. If he but, dies, he dies. You know what I mean? Yeah. Yeah. Well, the other thing, too, and this is something that I've kind of noticed, you know, like since the pandemic hit, is like a lot of people that, I mean, not even just musicians, but you're we're talking sound guys, recording studio artists, tour managers, uh, guitar techs, people, that, the door guy at the venue, the, you know, bartender, whatever. All these people rely so much on live music well i i think that there's probably a good portion of people that were dedicated to the scene or like tied to the world or the you know the industry in some way that now they're looking this as like their way out and now they're it's like a signal to them to like i'm not running sound at this venue anymore i went and got a job where i'm taking care of old people or something and now i can afford you know, because I'm like, maybe I'm getting paid better. I don't know. Maybe Probably. I can afford, like, you know, a house for my girlfriend and I or something like that. I don't know. So I think that there's a lot of things like that that might be coming into play, too. But I don't know. I mean, we'll see. Cause maybe, I mean, cause hasn't, everyone has had to find alternative work. If that was your sole source of income was, like, the music industry. Well, that's a lot of people. Aren't a lot of, like, aren't all bands now, like, having to get jobs? Like, it's been a minute. You know what I mean? Oh, so they've had... since March? I mean, yeah, so, like, yeah. Say, say I'm just any middle-of-the-road band, even, like, a nationally touring, August Burns Red or whatever. Like, unless you're selling crazy merch, eventually you guys are going to have to get jobs again until it, we can tour. For the most part, though. It really depends, though, too, because you got to think of all the bands that are just burning that road, like, burning the rubber on that road all the fucking time. Yeah. To where they can't have a job because they're just touring relentlessly right. all the time. You know, and then a lot of those guys that, oh, I'm in this band, but when my band isn't touring, I'm running a recording studio. I'm doing graphic work for like these bands artwork. I'm guitar teching for this band. Or, right. I don't know. Or tour managing. Right. So whatever. all their sources of income just dry up. Like, like oh, pfft, literally yeah. bagging groceries. I, uh, I had a show that was booked in December and the. I mean, it's not happening anymore, obviously, but like it was months ago where I was like, dude, is this still happening or like what? And then I like, and the agent sends me an email. I was like, Hey, just a heads up that show that we have in, uh, in December might be canceled. And I was like, okay, well let me know. Well, a few weeks go by and I'm like, what if that, is that show still happening? Like, what am I supposed to do? Like, am I, should I be promoting this? Or like, what's the deal? I go to the band's website and, or, uh, uh, Facebook and they have already canceled everything. And I never heard anything about it. And oh, I'm like, shit. Oh, well, shit, you know, like, well, I didn't fucking know. So I emailed the agent and I was like, hey, man, like, uh, I saw that this was canceled. Like, you didn't let me know. Like, is is this canceled? Like, I need to know. And he's like, oh, yeah, that was canceled a couple weeks ago. Everything just really sucks right now. <laughs> and I was just Jesus. Like, wow. Whew, boy. And I was like, all right, man. Well, well you know. Well, well, I was going to yell at you, but I yeah. think that Don't might make you well, tie no, the noose. I, like, <laughs> I, wasn't, I wasn't upset. I was just like, wow. I mean, like. It, it does. I mean, like, he's just like, I don't know how I'm going to make money. He's like, I have a kid and I have a wife. And like, that was my job was booking shows. And I can't book shows because there can't be shows anywhere. Time to grow up. Damn. Just kidding. Yeah, I'm just it's, kidding. It's, it's, well, you know what's funny is some of those guys make way more money than we do. I was oh, yeah. Say, no, yeah. I, know. I know. Some of them did grow into, you know, massive mm-hmm. salaries. They just figured the it industry. out. Yeah. Mm-hmm. They either got lucky, they really got the skill. They know someone. I don't know. Who knows? Fucking same as any. Other All of job. those things are true. Same as any other. Yep. Job. Yeah. If you know, yep. someone. dude. If I could, if I could make, if my full time living like not having to do my normal job and then just be a promoter or do something music oriented, I would totally do that. Like hell yeah, you know that'd be a lot better than talking to other people about shit I don't care about. <laughs> you know. Like, right. So I don't know, but that's my whole mantra on it, I guess. Yeah, it's sad. I'm just hoping shit. I don't know. I don't know what I'm hoping. I, everyone's gonna fucking get it, but I got it. That's how I'm always. I like, went that's through all it. Just yeah, Dylan got it. I was like, you what? Get the fuck out of here. Yeah. <laughs> no, I had it. It was like a three quarantined, day. like whole whole nine. Did you die? No. How but was it? Did you like? Uh, it wasn't was it terrible. Or... It was just a really bad flu, 
but like the first day or two it felt like strep and then it switched to like a cold and then it switched to like flu feeling and then i was tired for two days and then i woke up and i was like i'm fine how long did you quarantine yourself for i think i was there i go when i after i found out that i had it i traced it back to when i got it and then i was another two weeks so okay. it was, i was at least like out for three weeks away from everybody mm-hmm. The only people that I really came in contact with after I thought, after when I'm almost positive where I got it at that Grangeville fucking goddamn golf tournament. With all you goddamn hillbillies. Oh, really? Yeah, at a golf tournament. 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 Yeah. Do you play golf? I do. Oh, okay. I've never played golf. I've always wanted to. Neither have I. Let's do it. I well, want to do not it now, but I don't want to. I don't know. Not you. You don't get to come. Okay. I didn't Terrence from Fadewood Studios. He he plays golf, and I talked to him about it one time. I was like, he's like, so what's it like playing golf? He goes, dude, it's awesome. He's like, you just get wasted all day and just like hit around these balls. It's fucking awesome. Yeah. I'm like, <laughs> well, I think I'd probably want to do that. Like, why would I? You don't have to be good at it. Yeah, I'm gonna suck. I mean, I'm not good at it, and I've been doing it since I was fucking sixteen. <laughs> yeah, I don't know. That sounds fun to me. You get stoned and fucking... It's really fun, stoned. That's something new I've learned in the past couple of years because I never smoked nice. before when I played, but now nice. it's like... it's. But, yeah. We should take mushrooms in golf. I, Yeah, I could do that. That would be really fun. It would be very long. I, I bet it would. Because it takes four hours to do 18. Yeah. We would have to do nine because... I feel like either one of those it would make it longer. <laughs> <laughs> Shit, it's only one in the afternoon. Like, Am I supposed to get in here the for water? Like two hours? <laughs> See, I like to golf by myself, too. So if I get really stoned to golf by myself, I just, like, put headphones in, and I'm just, like, gone in a land of green. Nice. Like, I'm just fucking zoned out. Just whipping. You know what I'm saying? Where are you just fucking. Know? It's just not appealing. The places. I don't know the name of any of the places. I've only been yeah. a couple of them. I don't know how that shit works. I don't know if you got to have, like, a membership. No, you Some can. Of them most, you of, do. most of them are public. Yeah, most Almost of them Almost every here. course is public. There's, like, so many, like, tucked There's away. There's one right over here in, uh, was it, uh. Liberty Lake. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Oh no. There's like they're everywhere. everywhere. There's some in there's, the neighborhood down the street yeah, on Idaho fucking, Street. There's fucking, there's fucking, yeah. There's, we're there's surrounded some, there's by golf right courses. By my house too, there's so many retired people. Why would you want to live on a golf course though? Like shit suck flying through your fucking windows. It killed your kid. Like why do you want to live around <laughs> these fucking shits flying? They, they they have pretty actually like good fence that you can get yeah, for your like, house. Then you're living behind this giant net like a. Bird. The golfer like, say though those houses are pretty baller. Right. Right. Yeah. Yeah. There's some pretty nice ones on that South Hill, of course, that I live by. I'll, like, ride my bike by there sometimes and just be like, fuck, these houses are so badass. South Hill's got some ni- it does, nice yeah. spots. Yeah, I like the South Hill. Up by the park. It's like the, it's like, it's kind of weird. It's like a lot of areas are kind of like that old-timey, like, early 1900s vibe or something. Right. It's like people, like, take care of their shit, <laughs> you know? Like, every house has, like, a light post at the end of the walkway kind of thing, you know? Like, it's, it's pretty interesting. Spooky land. It's... It's nice, though. I mean, dude, after, with like, 10 o'clock, it's like a fucking ghost town up on the South Hill. I kind of <laughs> like it. I mean, I went from living in a neighborhood where, like, I hear the slightest noise, and I'm looking out my window, seeing if someone's fucking You said car. you lived in Browns, right? Well, I lived in Browns, and then I moved from there to, like, the uh, West Central neighborhood. And that's actually where I grew up, like, in Felony Flats and stuff like that. Okay. So I was living there for, for quite some time, and, yeah, it, it sucks. I mean, it's just... Typical, like, north side Spokane. So I can say that now because I live on the South Hill. <laughs> South Hill snob. I'm better than <laughs> you. No, I, I like it. I, f- I was, like, I was so sick of, like, dealing with, like, all the ghetto shit on the north side. And I was, like, dude, I – because I had to move. Because my my landlord got his girlfriend pregnant, and then he had to move into – he's, like, all right, guys. Like, I need to move back into this house because I'm having a kid. And and my buddy Adam and I were, were roommating, renting the house for him. And we are like, fuck. And I was like, dude, I'm going to move to the South Hill because we're working on a house up there at my last job. And I was like, dude, it is nice up here. Like, there's not, like, people at every stoplight with a sign asking for money. You're not, like, in the grocery store and, like, dealing with tweakers and shit that are, like, in front of you. Or I don't know. It's just, like, it's a different vibe. It's, like, because I wanted to move outside of the Spokane, out of Spokane, but I also didn't at the same time, just because with like all the booking and shit that I do here, and that's like the best thing that I could do was to live in like a nicer neighborhood that made me feel like I was living in a different <laughs> yeah. city, but actually not. So I don't know, it worked out pretty good. But I like the South Hill a lot. It's gonna take a lot to get me off of that hill now, because I've like, I've just done that life for too long now, where I'm just like, dude, I don't want to fuck with anyone else's shit. I don't want anyone to fuck with my shit. I don't know. 
is it is it do you chill. feel like way it's like very out. much safer on the south hill you can like leave your oh yeah dude you should unlock dude i was yeah, living yeah. in felony flats we right. had like meth head like meth dealers and shit live across the street from my house and everything like it like there was fights all the time between the neighbors there's people fucking with our cars there's people fucking with our houses there's people walking into our house when like uninvited like uh who are you and we'd be having we'd have like five people over or something and it's just like i'm so right dude like i i can't live that life man i've i that's like early 20s shit and like i'm i'm 32 now you know it's like i've I'm, I'm done. So I moved to the South Hill. Like it's been about four years now, and ever since then, I'm like, dude, this is so much easier. I'm paying more for rent, but I will. Glad it's I'm worth it, bro. You told me rent. what you you told me what you were paying, and it was like exactly <coughs> what I was paying at the apartment yeah. that I was at. So I mean, but I've been living there for four years, and we've kept the house pretty good. So oh. I think that we're kind of grandfathered into that, right? I'm sure if we like moved out and They'd the landlord bump it up was like, a lot, yeah. yeah, he'd probably be like, oh. Not gonna cost us much now or something that's what i'm assuming anyways because i mean dude you can get a lot of money for property in spokane right now and it sucks for all of us too because the prices for everything are going way up you know with everyone moving up here from california or whatever and like houses getting snatched like that and everything's getting more expensive but are we making more money most most of the time no no so it just mm-hmm. sucks man so i'm pretty pretty fortunate where i live right now Is there is there anything good like about to happen we can all I look know, forward dude. to? Yeah, no, Jesus, nothing. Yeah, I was thinking like this music's probably going to take a turn and just be like all this like like back of the sixties. Like this like... year's been pretty good la, for music. La, la, though. La, la. <laughs> I don't know. There's been some good stuff yeah, that's happened. There's been a couple. Th- Oliver Tree put out the best album of the year, so I don't really. Was he that one it. rapper guy or whatever with the weird? Bowl he, cut yeah, thing? dude, he's, he's obsessed with this. I fucking. Do you ever love listen him. to Prof that bald guy? Yeah, I saw him at Bartlett like a. It was it like two years ago? That guy is amazing. It was yeah, pretty incredible. He's pretty crazy. Yeah, I'll show you. The him show afterward. was wild. The music videos are very entertaining. Oh yeah, big time. Um, Oliver Tree's kind of a one-off thing for me. You would you would like Prof because it's the same kind of thing. It's very visual. That's kind of what it makes me think. Of. I listened to a little music. bit of Oliver Tree and it was it was interesting and I didn't think it was bad. I was, I was just like, oh, this is this is kind of weird, but I, don't know, I guess I need to watch more music videos or something yeah he's just i don't know he's weird he's like the scooter kid at the skate park i always wanted to fight you know what's your favorite album or something that came out this year that misery signals out oh okay that was good yeah Yeah, yeah, so dope yeah that that album was real good what else just recently came out there's like another album too that i haven't really listened to a whole lot yet i like four years strong's new album too Oh, that'd be pretty like good. That. I like that. That'd be awesome. Like oh, dude, the new Deftones is fucking awesome. Yeah, that's it pretty is, good, of course. man. I did that's that. Default. That's default. That's that goes without that. saying. Yeah, absolutely. That goes without 100%. saying. Hundred percent. Yeah, I'm obsessed with that band. Probably it's an unhealthy obsession. But... Your dog's name is Chino. I've got Chino. T- <laughs> tattoos of the band, Marie, tons man. of merch, and my dog's named after the singer. It's bad. I love Deftones, but. Yeah, I like everything they do. So I'm like, I'm, I'm extremely biased. They exactly. could put out their worst album. I'd be like, this is dope. Like, I liked Gore. That album was trash. Like, that was their worst I album. I like that. And album. I fucking I love know. that album. Yeah, I, I love like it. it. I fucking love it. Yeah. And I, I know it's trash. I've, I've heard it all. I'm like, oh, this album sucks. I feel like there's, I, I know I'm totally going to listen to this is, later. Is another... like, why didn't I think of this album? That album was amazing. It yeah. earlier this year or something, but yeah. I don't know. Yeah, Misery Signals, that was just like the biggest like blow my load moment this year for music. Because it was out of nowhere, like, hey, we're back together and here's an album. It Well, like, I um, knew about it. I knew that they've been writing an album for a while now. Um, and I I heard it straight from the horse's mouth. I think it was the guitarist. Like, we got this horse in our band now, and he's something. can't get his fucking <laughs> mouth shut, dude. We're thinking about kicking him back. It's Bojack Horseman. Yeah, Bojack yeah, Horseman on, on bass. So we're kicking him out. No, but uh, yeah, that album is really good, though. I like it better than the last one. The last one, it, I mean, it's a it, it's a good album, but I mean, it's I don't know it. This new one, it's just it's got a lot more dynamic to it. I like it. I still don't like it as much as Controller, but I still really like it. Yeah, I'm I'm a, uh, I'm a, I'm a now it's gone. Sade. What's like the What's the album before Controller? Uh, is it Mirrors? Yes, I like Mirrors I a Mirrors. lot. Yeah, Mirrors is good. And then Years. of Malice, of course. 
people that are yeah. listening to this that don't listen to metal are like, yeah, dude. shut the <laughs> fuck up. Go back dude. to the UFC. Be fights. funny and talk about <laughs> fucking douchebags. You guys haven't uh, said one thing that could be considered yeah, racist mirrors. this whole episode. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, so the one that just came out was Ultraviolet. Then it was Absent Light before that in 2013. So they, this is the first album this year they put out in seven years. Right. And they That's brought it out hard. Of long time. That's too long, dude. They brought it hard, too. Oh, you know what another good one is? Is that Heaven Shall Burn album. That was before the pandemic, though. But that album was pretty good. I don't recall that one. That's good. So they so check this out. They made a music video. They got like their record label was like, hey, here's some money to go do a music video, like figure it out. And they're like, all right, so we got this. So they found they, they like watch these like under budget movies that are made by this uh, filmographer in, or director in Africa, like in I might be in like Congo or something like that. And they gave all the money to him to make a music video for them. And it is like over the top awesome it's so rad so like they just like gave like they took the check and like here you go mr obafemi or whatever his name is and like make us a music video and the like what's going on in the video makes no correlation at all with this what's being said in the song but it's like awesome it's like this under budget like action where there's just like people shooting each other and like karate chopping each other i need to stuff. see this one like a giant gorilla and stuff it's we couldn't it's play it. awesome. i mean well we can no. play it on that. but yeah we couldn't it can't be on youtube it's, um, it's pretty pretty rad i like i like what heaven shoulder did with that it's pretty awesome they've been around for a long time they have for a real long time damn for really really for millions and millions <laughs> millions and millions and millions, <laughs> millions. So what else is going on? Are we, are we excited about anything? Are you guys stoked for the holidays? We're all going to like meet up with our families and like kill our ants with this virus. I'm shit. literally I'm flying stuffing. to Texas to see Kevin. Yeah, that's really weird. Nice. Um, he's going to go. Why isn't Kevin coming up here? He's right. coming. He'll be here for Thanksgiving. Oh, okay. Gotcha. But yeah, you think you'd just like buy him a oh, ticket right. to come up here again. No, I want to go to Texas. Oh, okay. This is kind of a me trip. He lives, you know, the, oh, it's your, it's you, like a. You know how my right. whole life is in shambles. You're doing like still, some me time. Still, still. Sorry, shambles man. i'm not homeless but shambles and um yeah i'm gonna go see kev cool and thanksgiving by uh, dallas right yeah he's in fort worth okay yeah. yeah hell yeah dude i miss kevin he's fucking awesome yeah yeah kevin's a shit we're i miss just... so many people and like that i just see all the time at shows like oh, I, well, yeah, there's I three know. shows this month so i know i'll like see all these people you know or whatever right and, like, so now it's to... like it's been months and i'm like dude how the fuck have you been man you know yeah. it's like and then i just kind of feel like a piece of shit because i'm like you know i never like messaged you or anything on facebook to see how you're doing but i guess you didn't really do that for me either so <laughs> you know it's right like whatever, yeah but it's like, true but it's like i'm sure once we see each other it's like because you did well because you've known these people for so long and you didn't need to because you've seen them three times a show so that's how the relationship developed like i'll just yeah, i'll see yeah, you at the next for show sure for sure like i don't need to check up on you because i'm gonna be like what's up dude yeah. we're gonna go smoke a cigarette outside of the pin you know whatever yeah we're down to one venue now. Oh that's yeah, now. that's right. Yeah, so the pin closed down. So the pin is that done. sucks. Well, I'm, so which I'm super bad. sad about because that was probably the best owners I've seen in that building, maybe. As oh, far the as best like owner, yeah, oh, Chelsea. Yes. Yeah, yes. As far I, as like, the, I will agree. As someone that the way like, the place looked, yeah, yeah. As as seeing like what was done to the place, and then also being like behind the curtain and dealing on like a you know a a sense like dealing with the owner and right. like setting up shows and stuff. A hundred percent. Yeah. It's like, I, it really sucks. Like, like Chelsea was rad as shit. She was so great to work with. Like she was very supportive about, you know, whatever ideas I had or helped me out with whatever it is that I needed, like everything about that. And I, the venue doesn't exist anymore, so I can tell the truth and it doesn't matter. So it's not like I'm kissing her ass or anything right. like that. You know? uh, yeah. but like, but it's, it, yeah, it was so, so nice to be able to work with someone like that. And, and the people at the big dipper, same thing. It's great. The problem with the Dipper is that it's not as versatile for some of the bigger stuff. And I mean, it's let's be honest, it's like half the size. Exactly. If yeah, that. Yeah. yeah, like I I can't book Killer uh, Sound though. I can't book Carnifex there. I can't book Right. Maybe I can book Kulik on there. I don't know. But like I can't do like any of the like bigger ish bands there because the cap there is so small. Right. So So then know. you're gonna lose all the now is it true that the knitting factory might also be I don't know. I hope not, though. I know a lot of people are like, fuck the knitting factory. Like, uh, no. Like, without the knit, you realize you don't we're get... going to lose so many concerts that are coming through that we would yep. otherwise not see. Especially right. without the pin. Like, shit that you back. literally couldn't book if you wanted to. Exactly, yeah. I mean, like, like for instance, Anthrax or, I don't fucking know, Kill Switch Engage. <laughs> right. Like, who knows? You know, like, Guar. 
Yeah. You know, that's the only place Guar will play, which, I mean, whatever. I mean, I'm not a huge Guar fan, but that's just an example. But you know? it helps like, the industry out. And it, it... Dude, it helps the, the music scene out, even though, like, people you know like us in like the underground ish scene kind of see like that is like oh those are the rock now you're four and a half or whatever but like nah yeah you're right but it's not always like that though i mean like right. if a day to remember wanted to come through you'd want to go see that i'd want to go see that where the fuck are they gonna play right they have to play the day there's nowhere yeah. else for them to play where else yeah you be? couldn't or yeah, like any other enough people i saw alice in chains there and it was fucking awesome well right. other than it being overcrowded but you kind of get my idea right you know like yeah. where are you gonna see mashuga when they try to come through or i don't fucking know like a lot of those bands they can't you know they're like too big for the pin but they're too small for like the arena or anything and that's right like, that's huge because that's that a, a lot, lot of, bands. of the concerts that yeah. are going on in spokane like right Lighting factory is one of the big you know like they have more concerts than anyone else in Spokane. So, I mean, I get people have their disdain for that place. Like, oh, I got kicked out for bullshit reasons and stuff. And it's like, maybe you did. But, yeah. you know, it's like, we have to have that place. We have to. Right. You know, like, could some things work a little bit more favorable for some musicians and stuff like that? Perhaps, maybe. Well, and to but, your point, you're not even, they're not even really competing with places like The Pin or the Exactly. Dipper. Yeah. They're not booking yeah. the same sort of shit. Right. Exactly. And that's kind of where I'm going, going at is that they're a vital piece of like the whole infrastructure. Infrastructure. Of the infrastructure. Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. It's a shame. I hope not. I hope, I hope that nothing happens to them. I really. I, I hate anything like that. Like, like people like make fun of Guitar Center going out of business. I'm like, right? How was that good? That Guitar sucks. Center helps so many bands. I feel yeah, like, like exactly. How yeah. many I'm times like, did a touring band come through and like, do you guys have a Guitar Center? Yep. Cool. Yeah. Then exactly. I can go exchange this yeah. or whatever. I mean, mm-hmm. I'm not a musician, so maybe like everyone's like, of course you'd say that. And like, dude, let's be honest. You know, like it's like having that here is better than not having it here. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like that, and that's like a hub, a gateway drug for these kids to go and like, you know, Play, get exposed to uh, yeah. rock music and like Avenge Sevenfold learn, riffs over and over again. Yeah. Learn the guitar. Then eventually they like meet other people with similar interests and then they get into music and then they get, I don't know. Like it's, I remember before I was even going to shows, my buddies were dragging me to guitar center, you know? So like, right. that's kind of like how you get exposed to that whole thing. That's how you get part, become part of that culture. So there's, it, sucks when you lose pieces like that you know like it really does and without the pin it's going to be interesting you know like how i mean something you would think would take its place for how long it takes to get back to normal but yeah i mean what else are you gonna do with that building like something i don't know man well i mean remember fat tuesdays they closed down they turned that motherfucker into a dance studio so i mean who knows maybe they could turn this place into a a gym right that'd be a perfect spot for a gym i do hot naked yoga there there. Yeah, there you go. Hot naked yoga. I mean, that's what we were doing. We're we're doing doing it for like, daycare. Yeah, but we were doing hot naked yoga with our friends for like five hot naked. No, I should say. (laughs) You beat me to it, you son of a bitch. He was about to say a hot naked daycare. Oh, I like that idea. Very inappropriate. Very, very inappropriate. It would have to be a daycare for adults. (laughs) Yeah, this is bad. No, you're babysitting adults, though. And there's alcohol involved. That's Dude, so it's like a bar, but it's drinking daycare. Drinking and doing hot adults. yoga sounds like the worst thing ever. In th- doing hot yoga sounds like the worst thing in the world. Doing that drunk sounds like a fucking nightmare. Yeah, that would be terrible drunk. That would be terrible. So yeah. doing, yo- doing normal yoga sometimes can be like, Jesus Christ, man. Like, what the fuck? Oh, <laughs> like, fuck are we kicking doing? my ass. Yeah. I believe I have a dick and balls. What am I doing? I'm just yeah. kidding. I need Golf a, and yoga. I need, a fucking, I need to do yoga to strengthen my legs for falling down a shitload of times that I'm going to be doing this winter when I'm snowboarding. Oh, I need to prepare for Shredding that. the yeah. gnar, bro. I'm going to try. I'm going to go shrulp the gnar. My face is going to shred the gnar for a while until I get better. So it's going to take some practice. Fun. Yeah, I haven't been on a mountain for a long time. I forgot how to ski and everything. I just went for the first time this last, uh, right, literally right before coronavirus, and my my buddies took me out, and I finally, like, dude, teach me. I was like, dude, I want to fucking learn. I want to do this. Like, I was one getting them to bring me out, you know? And then they were, like, awesome at, like, helping me out. They are like, they had the most amount of patience. Doghouse and Jordan, thank you guys if you listen to this. Like they, like I was like fucking thank you so much for putting up with, <laughs> with me. But but I I was like able to like go down the mountain and shit. Like I did pretty good on my first day. I feel like I went for the whole day and just like I was able to hit the hills with them like wherever they wanted to go for the most part. So I mean it worked out. I just need to get better. It just takes practice. Just be so. better. 
Just be, just do better. Just be better. just be better. I don't like snowboarding. It's too cold. You wouldn't. Yeah. I was a skateboarder. Dude, when you're snowboarding though, it's like you're moving around so much you're like sweating to where it's like you don't feel cold though, mm-hmm. or at least I didn't. So. Oh, should we tease the thing we're working on? The fight. Wait, are you guys doing like a Fight Club thing? So that'd be pretty nuts. Okay, so yes and yes. All right. So. We are in the midst of arranging a fight. We think we have a venue, possibly. That's why we haven't technically announced it formally, but I guess I'm kind of right now. Dylan is going to fight Jeff. Jeff has been on the podcast a few times. I've known him for a long time. He's actually a neighbor, lives down the road. Each fighter. He's not a man. He's, okay, okay. Um, he's one of our mutual friends, first of all, so you're going to be fighting someone you know. Um, but... They are going to get. Do I know this Jeff person? You probably don't. You okay. might have crossed paths with him here a few times, maybe. Very forgettable guy. Okay. <laughs> okay. So, uh, so not like this Jeff no. guy. Or... They're they're no, starting to get just... into character gotcha, for the gotcha, fight. Okay. So, anyways, um, I agreed to corner okay. Jeff, and my buddy Brian, who's also been on the podcast, is going to corner Dylan, which he's living with. with right now. So he's living with his trainer. With a gym, we have a gym and a full yeah. gym and everything. I that turned my like garage a complex with like a whole. He's in a yeah. I, I turned my garage course, into a yeah. gym. It's got a punching bag, whole nine yards. Hell We're yeah. getting headgear, mouthpieces, shorts, like shirts made. We're each okay. going to fly a flag. We think we have a guy with a building that has an MMA cage set up in a room, like what? a garage oh, that like we're going to use as facility like an something? actual like wow, you know, octagon yeah. cage, wow. um, and then obviously film it. Um, but yeah promote it through the please stop social media and Dude, just awesome. do live stream and then have the Auto video up on our YouTube channel of just some ghetto ass, you know, street beef style, like amateur fight between two, two friends. But for an actual belt, we're getting a belt engraved. Oh, nice. The whole yeah. nine yards. So it, by, by saying it now, I'm kind of committing to it, stop but belt. Oh, you're yeah. committing to it. Yeah. Oh, I'm not, you're I'm not getting punched in the it. face at all, but yeah. So I'm, what's, is, is, are you guys like similar weight or like, how's so that? that was the issue. Originally Dylan and Brian were going to fight cause they just, they no, hate each other. Ne- they love each other. Never was that going to happen. I was trying to get Brian to beat the fuck out of Dylan. It was the, was the, was what was happening. I was just taking the long rounds. Like, you guys should do an organized boxing match. So instead we found two people that are closer weight because he's at 185. Brian's like north of 250. The weight cut would be impossible. Right. Gotcha. You did, they're just, that's not Doesn't realistic. Make any sense. Yeah. Jeff, however, hovers around 215. A little bit better. A little bit better. He's at 185 right off the couch. Means you need to eat more. So, yeah, so much. we decided <laughs> that Jeff's got to lose 15 pounds in six months, so it's not impossible, and he's got to gain. Um, they need to be between 190 and 200 pounds. So yeah. he ne- all he needs to gain is five pounds. Yeah, that's easy. That's no problem. Jeff's got to drop 15 and keep it off. You'd um, be surprised. So most likely Jeff will be at 200 pounds and he'll be at 190, but that's fine. It's, 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 it's 10 pounds. It's a lot, but it's not a shit ton. Um, they will get headgear. They will get, um, you know. Well, if it's mutual, you can't really like. Right. And it's boxing. So we're not talking clinch. Gotcha. We, they, okay. they, See, they that's may what not, I was wondering about. They may not even. It's, I guess it's up to you guys if you want to wear a cup. I don't give a fuck. But like it should be all above the belt strikes yeah. okay. type shit. Um, that's going to be fun. I don't trust his aim. He's like fucking four inches shorter than yeah. me. Yeah. So I'm trying to hype up Jeff, but Jeff needs no confident boost. The dude's ready. He's like, yeah, let's fucking do it. I can tell. He's like, he's about to turn 40. Um, oh, really? Okay. On Halloween. So oh, he's like, awesome. yeah, I'm going to beat the fuck out of someone 10 years younger than me. I'm like, dude, do it, man. Do it. Do <laughs> that's it. That's awesome. So he's getting pumped. Me and Brian are so stoked to watch these two idiots just punch the fuck out of each other. So that's badass. We're going to kind of nurse this along, but expect sh- expect shit talking videos on both sides Good. um training videos we're gonna hype it up like as if it was a real fight i want to get um maybe ben or someone to do like you know tail of the tape cards or like pictures of them with their shirts off and the stats That'd be awesome. you know That'd be cool. post those and just kind of feed Make it but of course like you know typical bros the date we picked was 420 and hear me out i didn't pick it because i'm like a stoner um we wanted to do it really soon but we're like eh, to do it right we need to kind of pump this up and they need time to train and it's gonna be winter and i want to do it outside but now we have an indoor venue so originally we were gonna do it in the springs so we can do it outside so yeah maybe it's sooner maybe it is this winter so mm-hmm. they've already begun training i have i've had jeff over hitting the bag doing cardio he's been riding the bike nice. and shit and getting ready fuck so yeah. they all all the stuff to do is just get ready to beat the fuck out of each other dude and, i want to see that okay. so yeah it'll be great um i'm technically cornering jeff but i, I want to see a war I'm. I'm it's not. Gonna, it's going to be a very sad <laughs> display. Forty seconds. Of it's going to be a very rating. sad display. 
So yeah, look forward to that. If you made it to the end of the episode, that's your little fucking nugget of information. We'll probably okay. we'll probably like pump it on social media here soon. But it's a we, great idea. We I'm need to guys didn't do that earlier. Yeah, and really, it's just a way to promote the YouTube channel. We we get a lot of listens on the audio side, but the YouTube channel is just neglected. And he puts a lot of work into the videos, and we get them up in fairly timely manner. So it's like oh, we need to, we need to pump more. So by filming the fight and having that on there, and then having it be more of a draw, we can hopefully transfer some viewers over to there as well and help help out YouTube a little bit. But. Yeah, dude. I'm stoked. I'm so stoked. I'm not stoked at all. <laughs> I'm stoked to do the shit talking videos because there's no fucking way he's gonna beat me at that. Oh, I can't. So I personally can't wait to film Jeff's shit talking video because I'm like, you know what? I don't appreciate like you know. It's gonna be very like he's he's also an insurance so I don't salesman. Know this guy, so like, I, no, I don't know if he's, he's just like, some thirty nine year old. No, he's some like thirty nine year old white dude who sells insurance. He's gonna know? have to throw himself into a character pretty hard. I'll be able yeah. to. I'll be able all to right. just. Are you gonna have Dill, I'll be able to like just Dylan to destroy him. He's turtle. He's the turtle. Oh, okay. So I, <laughs> Jeff, we that were we were Tortuga. Yeah, we were snowballing some names for Jeff, and we didn't really land on one that we loved. But we're we're going for sort of a, like a super nationalistic, blindly patriotic type. How about white, caveman white with AIDS? Because I think he's already kind of halfway there, and I can lean into that as a bit. So I'm gonna be his like trainer. Do it. Well, um, I mean, if, if it's something that he can relate with a little yeah, bit. Yeah, we're I'm just going to fly an American thing. flag. He's got some, like, custom yeah. thing with a turtle and a cigarette or something. So I'm going, we're just, <laughs> we're repping Team USA. He wasn't yeah, joking. We're going to, yeah, we're leaning into just, like, straight nationalism. We're like, no, dude, America. I we're going to be. that turtle in uh, Family Guy when he's, like, trying to kill Stewie or whatever. <laughs> like, <laughs> oh, that's funny. That's awesome, though. So, yeah, I guess that we have we have that to look forward to. Fun, so, yeah. hope, you know, maybe spring, maybe Fart. sooner. Maybe, maybe it's a Christmas present. Your aunt. Your sister, maybe even your mom might have died from COVID, but at least you have this to look forward to. Yeah. Well, and if your aunt did not die, she should probably challenge Dylan for the belt when he wins it. Because um, she's obviously a beast. Uh, thank you for listening. Thank you for making the drive. Thank you, Ryan. Uh, that was... Thank you guys for having me. I almost died on the way here. It's he almost <laughs> died. For you. He almost... For you, the listeners. It's real friendship. All right. Goodbye, guys. Bye. Goodbye. Bye. It was like so freezing in here when we when we started the podcast.